Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. Why do I keep calling these nice? Because these are nice equations. First of all, notice that we don't have x squared term. So that's good for cubic equations because we're going to use the cubic formula uh, a little bit, not too much. So let's go ahead and talk about two different methods here. The first method is going to be using the cubic formula. Whether you call it Ferrari's method, Cardano's method, Tartaglia's method, Ferraro, Ferrero, Ferrari, Lamborghini, I don't know what the method is called, but somebody found it, somebody discovered it, and someone else took it from them. So, here's how it works. I have A plus B quantity cubed equals A cubed plus B cubed plus 3AB times a plus b. And you're like, no, that's not what the binomial theorem says. Well, this is what the binomial theorem says after you factor the two terms in the middle. This is my favorite version of the binomial theorem for cubics. Because if I go ahead and subtract this part from both sides, then I get the cubic formula, almost. And here's how it works. Let me show you. It's very easy. Uh, there's probably other versions of it, but I like my own version. Sorry about that, it's a little selfish, but that's what it is, what can you do? So I'm going to call this x, there's a good reason, and then I'm going to come up with this equation, x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. And guess what? The solutions of this equation are going to be a plus b for different values of a and b, whatever they are, right? And this equation can be solved by comparing this to our equation. What is our equation? This is our equation. Look at the similarities. It's not a system, but I just want you to compare these two. Look at that. Isn't this awesome? I have 3AB and I have 8. They both have a minus sign, so I can totally ignore the minus sign. This one has A cubed minus B cubed, and this one has 8. Okay? Make sense? So one-to-one -one comparison gives us 3AB equals 8, which implies AB is 8 thirds. And the second one gives us a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 8. And from here you can do something like isolate b cubed and write it as 8 minus a cubed. We're going to use this, but before you can use this, we have to cube both sides here. Let's do it. Not too hard. a cubed b cubed is equal to 8 cubed is equal to 8 times 8 times 8, which is 64 times 8, which is 512. You can also look at it as... 2 to the ninth power because 8 is 2 to the third to the third is going to be 2 to the ninth. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead, take this b cubed and sub here. That's going to give us a cubed times 8 minus a cubed. a cubed equals 512 divided by 27. And then if a cubed is called c, we get 8c minus c squared equals this. And then you'll end up getting a quadratic this is the beauty of the cubic, cubic formula because it gives you it re reduces the power and gives you a quadratic which is very easy to solve you solve for c and then c is equal to a cubed or b cubed from there you can find a by cube rooting c and of course uh, there's two values and then let's say b is going to be the other cube root of c let's call this c sub one and the other one is going to be c sub two it doesn't matter by the way because x is just going to be their sum okay make sense so this is going to be the answer. Good luck with that. Well, it's not super bad if you try to solve this equation. Of, of course, it would make sense if you multiply both sides by 27 to get 27c squared minus, what is 27 times 8? I'm thinking about 160 plus 56. That will be 216c. That's how I do it mentally. Plus 512 is equal to 0. And then, oh man, this is going to be crazy with the discriminant. But yes, uh, a lot of things can be simplified. 216, 27 are both divisible by 9. So hopefully you can use that fact to simplify this expression. Make sense? So you should be able to take out at least one 9 because 9 squared is going to come up. And then, you know, uh, the rest is easy. Just plug it into the formula. That's going to give you a C. Don't forget that. You have to cube root it and then add, uh, find two values for C cube root both, add them up, you get the x value. That gives you one x value though. How do you find the other ones? You'll see, they're easy. You can do polynomial division or something else. Okay, great. So this is pretty much the first method. I wanted to go into a little bit of detail even though this is incomplete. I hope you don't mind. 
This is basically how the cubic formula works. When you write the cubic formula in its entirety, like, okay, so I'm trying to solve this equation, and I do need a single formula to solve this, like the quadratic, it's going to look a little complicated. But if you kind of take it step by step, then it's not going to be that hard. If you want to memorize it, be my guest. By all means, you can memorize it. But I don't think anyone, anyone has memorized the cubic formula. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, anyways. Second method. I know some students memorize digits of pi, which is, again, not very helpful or useful. But anyways, sometimes there are competitions. So second method. How do you work with the second method? Obviously, it has to be something else, right? And here's how the second method works. We're going to factor this expression. How do you know it's factorable? Hmm. Well, I'm going to try it. So this kind of goes along with the rational root theorem. So let's talk about that as well. But the rational root theorem might also be a third method for this problem. Okay? Because I don't have to use it. I can just try to factor it. So the rational root theorem basically tells us when you put everything on the same side, and this is a monic polynomial, which means the coefficient of x cubed is 1, then if there are any rational roots, and remember we talked about this in the previous video, right? Or, yes, it was yesterday, right? Exactly, yeah. The video, the second video that came up yesterday talked about the same thing. And uh, basically, if there's a rational root, it has to be a factor of negative 8. So there are some good candidates like plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, and plus minus 8. And then you test them out, so on and so forth. And you realize one of these is going to work. But here's what I'd like to do. Instead of using rational root theorem, I think about this problem in terms of cubic formulas. Now, I realize immediately that this is a difference of two cubes. Great. So I can kind of put these together and then separate the negative 8x and then factor this. But, there's a big but there, this becomes problematic because now I end up with like a dangling single monomial. There's nothing that multiplies it that I can use as a common factor. So this is not good. Even though it looks factorable, it's not helpful at all. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to play with this number, like play with these numbers, which I call manipulating. And again, my message is clear. Don't manipulate people, manipulate numbers instead. So here's what I'm going to do. I can't get the first of two cubes, but can I get the sum of two cubes? And the answer is yes. Why? Because x cubed plus 8 is a sum of two cubes. But where does the 8 come from? Well, I wrote the negative 8 as 8 minus 16, and I used the 8. Now I got to use the negative 16. Makes sense? Okay, I just made it up randomly, right? Total random. Well, I kind of thought about this, of course, right? So now we have these two things. Take the negative 8 out, and then you get this. And great, this is sum of two cubes, and this is one of the factors. Yay, success. Okay, great. Let's factor this from sum of two cubes. You should know this formula. If not, then just go ahead and memorize it. It's very helpful in algebra. And now x plus 2 is a common factor. Take it out. You get x squared minus 2x plus 4 minus 8. That's a minus 4. Yay, I'll have real solutions all over the place. Great. What do you do with this? x equals negative 2 is a solution. And the other one is going to give me x squared minus 2x equals 4. If you add 1 to both sides, you get this. And then x minus 1 squared equals 5, which is square root of 5 squared. Then x minus 1 becomes plus minus square root of 5. And x becomes 1 plus minus square root of 5. So there's going to be three real solutions for this cubic equation. All right? Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Yay, Wolfram Alpha agrees with us. Great for them. And the graph of these two functions, they intersect at three points. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.